walking by here last night just after sunset and I noticed this uh, this sort of break in the um, the edge of the vegetation so you can see all kinds of clover and grasses and stuff growing up right here and then you look over on this side and it, it picks up again right here um, but in the middle there's this there's this gap and you can see um, a stick right here so let's take a closer look this is probably like one of the the freshest beaver signs I've ever found um, and I've seen along the river here I've seen a lot of older stuff like from previous years but I hadn't actually seen any um, like fresh and so this is it's just amazing how much they uh, they pad down the vegetation in here um, you know, it's like everything is just crushed all the way out to to the edge of the trail. And um, you know, when you if you see this sort of thing, it's a it's really important when when you find signs of animals and you can tell that it's fresh to take that opportunity to really study it and look closely because when it's fresh that's really when it has the most insight to offer you and the most that you can learn and then you can continue to come back and you can check on it as it ages so you get that full perspective of you know time but um there's just something about a really fresh animal sign that um has a lot to offer so you know oftentimes if we're like busy or we're trying to get somewhere we might just uh you might pass it by but don't do that um, you know when you see something it's important to investigate while it's alive and that's when it'll have the the most insight to offer you here we are looking in from a different angle and you can see the trail goes off this way and there's a trail going this way and if we come around again there's you know a matted down area right here and um, slugs feeding on the freshly chipped pieces of wood and so we can look at this and I, I know this is fresh because I've been coming through here fairly regularly and um, this was not here before but you can also tell just by the uh, you know the color of it um, the feeling I wish you could just feel the cambium here or the lack of cambium here I've come inside the trail and this is the the tree that was chopped here with the padded down area and there's one trail that goes off this way you can see it continues down there and then this is the river edge right here. So the river is all the way down there. And they somehow make their way up here. We'll see if we can find how they do it. Um, but there is also right in front of me, this right here is a trail where it looks like they've maybe, this might've been where the, where the tree was actually dragged down. Oh, well, but then it goes, uh, it goes back up again, so maybe not. It's crazy to think that this area right here where I'm standing just a few days ago was thick with all of this stuff. It's like two or three feet tall and it's all been pushed down to where, you know, there's just no vertical height to it. So it might right now look like I'm just walking through tall grasses and rose bushes and uh, thick vegetation, but I'm actually standing in a trail 
that is two or three feet deep in vegetation. And it's actually really easy to walk in here. So I think potentially the best way to do this is for me to actually go all the way down to where the beaver hits the water. And then because of the position of the sun, if I follow the trail back, I think you'll be able to see it a lot better. So I'm gonna make my way through this little beaver trail that goes underneath a rose bush. <laughs> and I need to make sure I don't accidentally slip on the mud here because it does get quite muddy as we go down. We're getting close to the water now. And uh, the edge is quite muddy and slippery, but sometimes that's just what you gotta do when you're tracking. You just gotta go into those places that uh, people don't normally go. And that's where, that's where a lot of the insights come. And really, I think one of the big things about tracking and understanding animals is just being willing to follow the trail farther than you normally would be inclined to go. And that's really one of the big keys. And here, I have no idea if this is gonna show up, but down in the mud there, you can see some tracks. Wow, it's, it's crazy how much so I think what's happened here is this, this whole area, you can see this clump of grass here. This whole area of mud used to be just grass growing all the way through to here. You know, so right now it just looks like a bunch of mud, but before the beavers were here, there was actually grass growing as thick there as it is here. That, that connected all the way into the edge. This is a great spot to find beaver tracks. Like a lot of times you don't find beaver tracks because they, um, they only really show in the mud right at the very edge. But there you can see a track. You can see a track right through there. And they're not very clear tracks. I'm not actually going to go down there because I will probably slip and fall into the river if I do. But yeah, here's where they're coming up on onto shore. And there might be other spots where they're doing it too. But this is at least one spot. And then from that main muddy slide down there, they have a trail going up this way. And the way that I came through is through this trail going up here. And so let's follow it back. Here you can see a spot where they went around on this side and they went around on this side. Now this is kind of cool right here because um, you can see there's a cut right here. I think this might be a rose bush. All through this whole trail there are rose bushes. There's roses all the way through here. The interesting thing about this is that this cut is definitely older than um, the one that I was seeing up higher. But if we look here there's some new growth here. And um, so it's not like this thing was cut in a previous year and then grew back. Like this was cut this year, I think. It's really interesting how much you learn from just finding some fresh sign in a trail and being able to actually follow the trail, see how the animal moves through the landscape and um, gets from place to place. It's a subtle sort of thing. It's hard to really quantify um, just how much more I feel I understand the beavers now after following that little trail for, you know, 15, 20 minutes and, and seeing where they enter the water and uh, where they come out of the water and how they navigate up the side of the hill, you know? It's, 
it's crazy down at the down at their bank it's incredibly steep um like you almost wonder how how do they even get out of there um and and make that climb up but beavers are actually pretty big right in here we can see another spot i think this one's even more fresh uh you can see some like red coloring on the cambium i actually don't know if this one was here last night when i came through this might have been done last night when it has that really fresh red color it's a good sign that it's very fresh so for a little bit of context there there is a like a dirt road here right along the edge of the river and I was continuing to, to come across and there's another trail right there which made me, I wasn't sure if it was beaver but it made me wonder if they would be crossing this road um, or whether the road would be too much of a deterrent for them. It's not a heavily trafficked road. Um, it's really just mainly foot traffic and uh, like maybe once a day a vehicle comes through. But I was looking in the dirt over here and you can very clearly see we do have some tracks here and a drag mark coming across here and if we get a, uh, a closer look at the tracks from you know looking in the direction that they're they're going um, yeah it looks pretty looks pretty beavery to me with the dragging of some sort of tree or something that they're uh, they've harvested so there you go a nice little beaver trail and some sign of beavers and doing some following and and uh, tracking and one of the questions that I have is around how do they decide where to to come up onto the the bank and, and where to focus their attention and does it change from you know day to day week to week month to month um you know i kind of suspect that they picked this area most of the the sign that i found or really all of the sign that i found was centered you know basically between this tree and that's the that's the really major cut that they've done i only found one major cut so far there is sort of that, that secondary that reddish one was more uh in here and then the trail going across the uh, going across the road was was a little bit down here and so and there wasn't really anything further along than that and um, so it's kind of uh, I don't know maybe 50 to 100 feet where they focused all of their attention and so does this is this because this is a core area for them or is it just because they're they're like here for a few weeks and then you know they move on to maybe a different section you know further down there and only time will tell the only way to really answer a question like that is to is to um is to keep coming out and keep looking and see what you can find um i'll definitely be coming back and um see if I can figure out how do they how do they move through the season you know we're, we're right at the end of June so there's still quite a bit of the the year left they've still got a lot of food that they're gonna be harvesting and it's the uh, my understanding is that it's the inner bark the cambium of these trees another question I have is around where where are they actually uh, living right now I have noticed along the edge of the river um, there are some some potential bank burrows um, that they might be using. I haven't seen anything to look like a, like a beaver lodge, which would be more like the sort of thing that you'd see in a pond or, uh, you know, a lake or something like that. I haven't seen anything like that. And there really isn't any still water like that around here. So I don't know if they just don't, uh, it's possible that they don't build lodges like that when you're in like a flowing river. I don't even know if they stay here all year long but i'll keep investigating and um if i find some interesting things maybe i'll share it in a video i do hope that the footage worked out for this video and that you're able to actually see the things that i'm talking about that's one of the challenging things about recording live action tracking um is that 
uh, you never really know. It's like difficult to get the right angles and to find the right spot. So I hope, I hope this came through and I hope it was interesting for you and I hope it inspired you to go out and spend some time tracking your own local animals. You know, maybe you have a river or a creek or um, a, a wet area that you can sort of just sort of go along the edge and look for any signs of beavers and uh, you know it's those their their signs are really obvious um, when they're chopping down trees and even their trails like when they're moving through fresh vegetation and they're just matting everything down um, beavers are really big and heavy animals and they're not really designed to function all that great on land and so their trails are really really obvious when you go by them and uh, you can see you can look for stick drags um, across roads and across trails and through vegetation and they will leave a, a really significant impact on on their uh, environment so it's you know as I'm going on my journey learning to track animals and follow trails and I want to uh, be able to, you know, follow some of the more subtle signs of different types of mammals. Beavers are a great place to start because you don't have to struggle quite so much. It's easier to follow their trails and you're able to do it for a longer period of time. And so um, it's, a, it's a really great opportunity. If you can find this in your area, I think you'll learn a lot from looking at beaver sign and following beaver trails. and always remember to be respectful if you do find a den or if you find um, a sign that they're they're very close um, they will warn you by slapping their tails and um, beavers do tend to be nocturnal so uh, if you go during the day I haven't had any problems following their trails during the day um, in terms of you know putting any kind of stress on the beavers or anything like that so just be mindful of that kind of stuff and uh, you should be good to go um, but let me know what you discover and um, the one last reflection that I wanted to share is that it was really interesting to see how I could almost see the psychology of the beaver in terms of how they choose which food they choose to go after first like starting at the riverbank they move in and they were primarily feeding on things like roses and smaller type plants. I'm not sure if they were feeding on any of the herbaceous plants like um, the grasses or any of the the little herbs that were growing down there. Um, they might have been. I'm, I'm not sure about that but definitely the rose bushes. And so they start with the plants that are closest to the riverbank and then they build their trail and those those cuts on the rose bushes were were older um, though still from this year so you could see how the beavers were starting at the riverbank and building their trails over a period of days gradually moving further and further in until they hit the larger trees which they um, they then cut and they they drag down to the river so I thought that was pretty cool to see but this video has probably gone on longer than it needs to be. So um, really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.